these are all just quick little scenes of it, and then when it's done, I have some more questions. That's Giovanni's character. That was so cool! It was my first ever kid summon! Yeah! see that! No, he saw it. Wasn't it awesome? He can't make his first secret street chapter! Huh? Where's Yuma? Don't know, he just left all of a sudden. I bet he went to see Shark again. I told you to stay away. I want a duel! I don't believe for a second you like hanging out with those losers! How do you know what I like? When you duel someone, you get to know who they really are! Right? So let's have a duel between friends. I told you I gave it up. Now get lost. Shark! Wait!
Johnny came in and sang the theme song. This is about eight months worth of work. And then about the end of eight months, it became kind of clear that we were not going to win the lawsuit. That four kids had really lawyered up well and they have a good team of lawyers. So, so there was this long drawn up about six to eight week period of, are, we gonna, are this going to air? What's going to happen? At this point, four kids started airing their episodes on television and so it became clear that we were kind of screwed. So we thought at the time, well, maybe we will redo this. Maybe we will rebrand it to something else. Call it not Yu-Gi-Oh, call it, you know, Yuma, call it Zexel, call it something else. And then the lawsuit cited the way that it cited, and essentially we were told, this is, this is your project, put it on a shelf, and don't ever let it see the light of day. So this is what we brought here because I just got so, so bummed by that. And Johnny was too. We were like, someone's got to see it. And so when it turned out that both of us was going to be here, we kind of turned to each other and said, why don't we bring a little Yu-Gi-Oh and, and show it and see what happens. <laughs> so there you go. So that's the saga of Yu-Gi-Oh that was last year. Um, do you guys have any questions about it? Any questions about I'm a voice director is what I normally do. Um, so I, I direct the shows. Uh, I direct the actors is what my job is, but I also write the shows. I wrote uh, the first couple episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh to just sort of get the tone set for the characters, but then after that, essentially, I had to have a team of writers come because we were in such fast production on it because we wanted to get as many episodes done because we had to film, we had to beat four kids, we got to beat four kids to get it aired, and um, of course it didn't work out like that. <laughs> so, so that's that. Now, are any of you guys Yu-Gi-Oh fans? Yeah. Um, and, and did you, so have you seen the 4Kids version at all? Is new, that, no? I think it's on the internet right now. I don't know if it's released here yet. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that's that. So I have never heard in the history, I've been doing this for 10 years, I've never heard of a, a clusterfuck of this nature happening. <laughs> <laughs> I know it happens with certain things, but on a, this is one of those where I was like, wow, really? 26 episodes in. So generally you'll get, you know, maybe it happens after three or four, maybe six episodes, but as many as we did to have it just shell. It's kind of painful. It's particularly painful because the version that's on television now is so drastically different, and in my opinion, it so does not embrace the spirit of, of who the character should be and, and everything else. So in short, what happened with four kids is they got bought out by another company, they didn't go under, they filed bankruptcy, and now they're owned by Konami. And Konami is now the one who is uh, who is making uh, Yu-Gi-Oh through four kids. So, so that's where it is today. And the license, I believe, another interesting thing is that the ADK people had created this license with four kids that was to last for like ever, essentially, until they, you know, they'll never screw us over. We'll just make this license last for as long as we want. Oh. That didn't work out. So, so I think now the way it all shook out is that I think in 2016, their license ends. What will happen at that point, I don't know. But it was it quite an experience to go through all that and not be able to actually air any of it. It was very good. We you know, would completely reanimate entire scenes. It was some really cool work, which nobody will ever see. So, yeah. Do you feel tempted to <laughs> you know, they, they got stolen from my shelf. Well, if John, if Johnny makes the comment, he goes, if somebody ever asked me for my demo reel, it's 26 episodes of one show. <laughs> so, yeah, no, you should ask Johnny for his 26 episode demo reel. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, of course. Go for it. That is something that is completely unique to this project. So we'd have actors come in there who've been doing anime for 10 years, and I'd say, it's okay, just go along we're animated, and their jaws would drop. They'd be like, what the, what, huh? Why well, can do that? All this time I've been cramming words into sentences for the past 10 years, and you can just add more flaps? And I'm like, I know, right? Um, yeah, that was something that I wish everybody would embrace. It makes for a better product on our end. In the defense of people from Japan, I can understand not wanting to take the bones of this thing you've created and say, here you go, do what you want with it. That's a lot of trust. And over the, the time we did this, we really did create the trust with the creator. 
to the point that the main producer came to the U.S. at the end of it all and sat me down at a table and said, I'm sorry, here's what's going to happen. I so would rather have your version on there. It was so much better, but legally this is what has to happen. So, yeah. Yeah? Was, was, was it going to be more than 26? It was going to be all of it. So we were actually halfway through 27, 28 when finally everything kind of said stop. Yeah, so yeah, we were going to keep going for, you know, the, they had like a 300 episode story arc. Wow. Yeah, whether it would have been good for 300 episodes, I don't know. How far behind was your version? Our version was about 10 to 12 episodes behind. Yeah, not, not too bad. Yeah. So, and they would take breaks so we would catch up a little bit. But yeah. But yeah. What we do in animation and what was done digitally? It was all done digitally. They did it in After Effects. So yeah, we get the After Effects file. Our um, our animator in the U.S. had to learn how to do After Effects in Japanese <laughs> because they, it was only in After Effects Japanese. And it was interesting because their After Effects was one version older than ours. So we had to, had them send us their After Effects software and essentially use that. And he would. You know, and it would all be in Japanese characters, and he would have to basically kind of blindly go through and say, I think that's what that is. <laughs> and then he would figure it out that way. So, yeah, we would basically we get their same project files and we'd open them up. We'd also do a little work in Final Cut, but mainly the animation was done after effects. What else? More questions? Yeah, go for it. Hi. Um, I, I don't watch Yu Gi Oh! Yeah. But I am a big fan of Okay. Um, Kids no longer has that. I do know that they had the same problem, people with Pokemon had the same problem with four kids with the same money issue, and that they were also in the lawsuit as well. Um, I think Pokemon does a really good job of bringing Japanese anime to the States and to, and to making it translate. I think Pokemon's a great show. In fact, there were, there were times where I would say to the creators, because they would say, you know, it was really awesome, because we had this great dialogue with the creators in Japan, where you would write up stuff that doesn't work here in the States. And I would, so we would say, you know, don't do that. You can't have, you can't have a boy running into his sister's boobs. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird here. I don't know if that's cool there. If it is, fine. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not. But we can't do that. And, but, but most of the time, I would say make it more like Pokemon. Because Pokemon is just fun. It had, it had more humor in it. Than, than I think that sometimes the Yu-Gi-Oh was, was skewing towards. And I would say, please add more humor. The levity is what I think makes Pokemon so great. Thank so, you. yeah, no worries. What else? Any other questions about the whole process, about anything, about voice directing? Yeah. Um, just because you you said you're a director. Like, yeah. When you've had to say maybe have a uh, guest, you know, guest stars on a show and stuff, have you ever sort of had to maybe <laughs> lie to them where, you know, that oh, yeah, that was a good job. And then, oh, wait, could you... Uh, Say to one of the other actual anime actors, oh, can you stay behind and can you maybe redo them? Or like, oh have, this, have you ever had like those high profile people? You want like, me to say this where there's cameras and stuff yes. on there and, yeah. and, and record it for all of posterity? Yes. Um, I'm going to say no. Oh. <laughs> but you know, there's definitely, it's my job as a director to make the, com the actor feel comfortable. So no matter what, I've got to make an actor feel like they're in a session where they are in a place to give a good performance. And if I don't do that, then everything is going to go into the spiraling vortex and ruin and we aren't going to do much work, good work. So I, I, it's, I really need to be encouraging to them no matter what. Even if they're like, I don't understand this freaking character at all, can you just kind of you know, put me step by step through it? Then, then that's what I need to do. Um, but obviously it's great when you get an actor who totally gets it and just runs with it and all I gotta do is just kind of tap them to the left or to the right and you get a much stronger performance out of it. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 
I do. And you know, I, sometimes I get asked at conventions, what was one show that I wish I could have worked on that I didn't? And it's Death Note. I think Death Note was a really cool show. And, and it went to Canada. And I was very sad about that. So yeah, I do. And, and I keep an eye on it. And, the, and I'll talk to whoever I think is doing it and say, that's a cool show you got coming down the pipe. So It goes through a certain process. Um, it doesn't hurt for me to say that I'd like it. Um, but it definitely is not, I'm not going to sway anybody. I mean, essentially it has to go for whoever's going to buy it in the States to distribute it here. And I am low on the total pole when it comes to that process. So, yeah. 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 So after you record the voices, is it, from, is it literally just adding the voices and like the sound effects and stuff that are already done? Generally like, speaking, was yeah. That, was that different on Yu-Gi-Oh? Did you actually? So with Yu-Gi-Oh, um, so on a normal anime, we'll get, um, basically this how this process works. And I've actually got a panel tomorrow where we go through it and you guys can have to step up and try and do it to the mic. Um, but um, is, is we'll get the video, and then the video has the, the audio track broken out. This is a standard anime we would get and we would dub in the States. And we just take out all the dialogue, but we keep the music and effects. And generally speaking, the music and the effects are married into one track. So if the sound effects are, are what they are, if they're too loud or too or mixing the music, I can't really think about it. I've got to get actors to talk louder if the music gets bigger so that they blend in when we mix it later. Um, in Yu-Gi-Oh, it was a different story. We had all the sound effects broken out. We took out all of their music entirely. We completely rescored it to a much more Western ear. We had a lot of guitars in there, a lot of power chords, a lot of grungier feel with it. We worked with two amazing composers, did a fantastic job on it. And, and we added more sound effects. So we, we used their sound effects as a bed, and then we completely enhanced what was there. We used, they started out, that was really great, and I'm a big fan of this too, the Warner Brothers kind of womp womp sound, sound effect. It's that kind of Looney Tunes kind of feel to it, which I'm a big fan of. And so we went with that and we added more of that, generally speaking, but, um, but the music was all ours. And it was composed not just, you know, for kids, music sounds to me like it's done in garage band, and it's like the same four tracks, just sped up and slowed down <laughs> and the whole thing. But we composed two picture every time. So it was not just, here's, you know, half a dozen library tracks, use them when you will. We literally scored, things got bigger, the music got bigger, they got quieter, and the music really was an excellent part of the whole thing. Because the music, if it's done well, is its own character in the show. So, so we got to do that, and it was cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, you said in 2016, the license of Paul could run out. Does that mean then this could see, like, the light of day? Well, that be only another question. I don't know if our version at this point that would air. I think the question is if if they would stay with with who's currently creating it, and if they would come back to us or not. You know, I don't know. Um, it was cool working with the people from ADK. It was um, they were all actually really interesting. Everybody in the states, everybody in Japan, were all really amazing, and really wanted our opinion and really tried to incorporate us to make it a great show. So we've talked about possibly doing other projects together in the future, which I would love to do. So hopefully that will happen. Um, and, and we would do the same thing. We would work with, with, the, with them, with the creators, and have the layered elements to make it you know, a better show. I mean, that's the thing is that if you can make it better, you should do it. Always. Yeah. Um, everybody sort of likes to say the sky is always falling in the dubbing industry. You know, there's always this, this feel of, of, zip, is we're done, we're doomed, no one's doing anime anymore. And then, you know, you get people on their high horse about, about fan subs and all of that, and that's a whole different panel that could last for hours on end, which I'm not going to get into. Um, I think, I think that what's happened is obviously, you know, the, the amount of anime that was done slowed down in the past couple of years. But before that, there was just a lot of crap out there. So if anything, I think it's made people more choosy about what they choose to bring to the stakes. And for myself, so last year, last half of last year, I was mainly doing Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh. I started Yu-Gi-Oh! in June, and I did that till the end of the year. But the first part of the year, I mainly did video games. This year, I've done almost entirely anime series. 
that have not had time to do many video games. So I think that it's actually created better content, and I do think that as long as there's good content coming from Japan, we will continue to have US dubs or, or, or English dubs done here. Because I just think that there's there's a call for it. So as long as they're done well, they'll keep doing it. So my hope is that maybe we just stop doing a bunch of crap and stop just dubbing everything that's out there and just bring some good stuff instead. Right? So, yeah. What else you guys got? Yeah. Do you collect Yu-Gi-Oh cards yourself? <laughs> Do I what? Do you collect Yu-Gi-Oh cards? No, I don't. Oh. I know, right? Um, but I did have to learn the game. <laughs> so I, I actually hired somebody to like sit down and teach me how to play the game. And at first I was like, my head is spinning, and I've been here for 15 minutes, and I'm oh my god, I can't remember half of the stuff. So, um, but I did get, and so what I gave this guy, I couldn't hire him. He was a guy who, uh, who I had worked with on something else. He was a big video yu fan. But I gave him, I had one of the, the new decks that they had in, in, in Japan, so I gave him that as a thank you. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't collect yu gi I had some cool ones, though, that I gave him. Yeah. Oh, so you said you voice to make video games? Is it? How is that different from like TV? Well, like, from doing anime? Yeah. So, um, yeah, the video games are. are are kind of a lot different. So in in anime, we do about 30 lines an hour. So that's basically what you need to do in order to stay on track. In video games, we'll do anywhere from 80 to 100 lines an hour. It's fast. Video games are go, 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 go. And a lot of that is because you're not doing to picture so much in a video game. You just have a bunch of wild lines that you need to do. But video games just work a whole lot different. They just, they're much faster, they're, um, they're, you know, a lot of the fun with games is if they're not going to be aired, you can get away with saying things that you can never say that it's going to run on television. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and I think that sometimes there's a little more freedom in games, because you, you get all the wild lines and things like that. You're not doing a picture. Yeah? Do you, have, do you get given... The games? Not your, well, no, I mean more like the lines and stuff, but like you involved the writing of it? Kind yeah, of sometimes stuff. I'll write the games. Um, Video game companies tend to have writers on staff more so than the people who are doing the anime anime distribution. So, but I have written a few games. Um, it just depends on on the company themselves that's distributing it. So, like Blaze Blue, do you guys know this game at all? Yes. yes. All right. So Blaze Blue was um, done by a company called Atlas, and they uh, they had a writer on staff, but I voice directed that. So that's an awesome game. Yeah. Yeah. I think Martin is a really funny guy. So, um, and, it, and it's funny that they keep because we were in Melbourne, they did the same thing where they kind of back to back this with the, with, with the with his panel. And so all of you sort of coming in who are fans of it, and I'm like, it's not the same show. <laughs> they are two vastly different shows. But I think it's great. I think he's a very clever guy, and I think that. Um, that spin off like that are great. I think that I think that all of it helps you know people get involved in into the show and no matter how it's done it's cool. So I got no problem with that. So any other questions? Yeah. Um, so just wondering about that. Um, did you like ever watch the other series and you know, like walk some sites maybe? Of course. Some of those mistakes. <laughs> yeah, in fact, that's kind of the first thing that I do whenever I'm researching any show is find out what everybody, you know, it's already a show that's, that's aired and it maybe hasn't been dubbed yet, but it has some fans. I find out what everybody hates about it first, and then I try to avoid that. Um, that's kind of an easy way to, to, to not make the same mistake twice. I'm all into making new mistakes, just not the same old mistakes. Um, so yeah, but, uh, and, the same with watching a uh, Martin show. I think it's great. I think it's a good time. So, yeah. Do you get this time you think associated with four kids or like, you know? Um, well, I was never associated with four kids. So we were sort of, there was A camp and B camp. Um, and, and I have actually been to four kids studio once in New York. Um, I did a documentary called Adventures in Voice Acting, which is all about people, yeah. So, and we actually interviewed there, and we interviewed the head of four kids there, and then we did a little bit of B-roll in there. So, that was about the most I've ever had involved with them. But most of the actors who, 
it's funny because we'd have the actors who come into the show and who had maybe been in New York for some time in their life and they were coming, now they live in Los Angeles. And they would uh, say, so so you guys have the show now, I thought four kids had it. And they're like, no, we're like, no, no, we're, we're trying to, you know, tell what's going on. They're like, well, you guys will win just because four kids sucks. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, I hope you're right. <laughs> But, no, not so right. Yeah. No. What else? Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, when you said After Effects, did you mean Adobe After Effects? Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Also, do you have any like, tips or, um, for people who want to make their own cartoon? Or? Their own what? Their own cartoon, like anime. Yeah. Um, like just like how to get it out there or to... Yeah, like... Or like, how to physically draw it. Uh, I mean like with helping voice actors and then when you make it... Um, Kind of like making it popular so people can see it instead of publishing it and then nobody and then actually. Then people will come and find it. Yeah. That's hard. Um, I think that the best thing to do on that kind of stuff is, you know, I think that social media is a big help. So the more people can get talking about it, the, the better it is. Um, I think that one of the things that people sometimes do though when creating it is they don't put a lot of effort into some of the things that don't seem important but they really are like good voice acting, good mixing with sound, that kind of thing. If you can get some, if you can get that stuff to sound pretty good, it can make up for maybe the fact that you don't have as much time or money to put into the animation that you'd want to do, but you had some really great talent and that can help sell some of those, those shortcomings that you, you're trying to work around on a low budget. But getting it out there, you know, there's just it's just gotta be a whole lot of you nonstop with it. There's great things, like you guys familiar with Kickstarter out here? Yeah, so that's an awesome way to get some good notoriety, get a little extra cash. There's a lot of projects that use that in, in states, and I think it's a great way to you know get a little extra bounce for your project. So yeah. What made you decide again to uh, Berkeley? Um, I was originally a writer, and I uh, was writing stuff, and I realized that I was too much of a control freak to hand it over to somebody else. <laughs> um, and. Uh, and so I went to film school to become a director. I was originally going to film school just to write. So I went and became a director. And I came out originally as a commercial director. And I uh, worked in Canada and in the US directing commercials for television. And in the first two years, I was on this phone call pitching how to make an ad for Cheerio sound better. And I just realized I'm going to sell my soul within like six months if I keep doing this. <laughs> So um, a friend of mine uh, owns a company called Bangs in Studios, which is where I do a lot of work. And um, he had invited me a couple times to come and direct some stuff. And I'm like, no, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And then finally I was like, sure, you know, let me see. And then that was a uh, show called Idol Project. And that was my first show, and that was 10 years ago. And I, just, and I quickly realized that, that this is a much safer home for me. That it's just got padded walls, there's no windows, <laughs> very few people out there. I like it here. So, yeah. You had another question? Me. Uh, no? You had a, no? No problem. Yeah. I don't know. When, you're, when you say when you're directing uh, video games and yeah. you know how you say you have more freedom with the lines, yeah. is it a certain, do you try to follow like a certain, have like maybe going dialogue and then all like the grunts of the fighting scenes and then back to dialogue or is it just whatever comes up that's easiest to do for the actor? Or? Well, you know, when you're doing video for animation, you've got this time code, which um, if you guys come to the panel. So there's a panel that I'm doing tonight at 5, which is all a bunch of bloopers and stuff, which I suggest you guys come to because it's some funny stuff. And also, I've got some really great um, stuff to give away. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, in, in video games, the way they code it is they have to have, you know, it's coded. So every line of dialogue has a big bit of code that it has to go along with it. So we are actually generally kind of the scripts in, in animation scripts are done in Word and games are done in Excel because it's all, every code has its own Excel number that's gotta be attached to. So you do things in, a, in kind of a more analytical way than you would do in normal storytelling. Um, you try to stay with the story arc if you can in video games, but a lot of times you just gotta kind of go with some kind of almost like a coding arc. Um, but you do have the grunts and groans. I try to break the grunts and groans into their own section if I can. <laughs> Nice. Then you should definitely come to the outtakes. Uh, All right. Um, so Persona 4 uh, is is um, a, first a game and then an animation series. Um, I don't know why I tried to talk about Persona 4 suddenly, but um, I lost my track on it. 
Oh, we're pulling your voice out. So yeah, so there was um, an actress who was in it who called me, and we were, I was working on it before I came here, and we had a session, and she said, I'm sorry, I can't do your session because I just did a video game, and the, you know, the 15-year-old girl that I'm supposed to play with you, I just can't do that. I've lost all my high notes. So you can't just, so video games will just, you know, there's all this, you know, particularly all the war games that are always like, you know, <laughs> die! You know, you do that for three hours, and you just sound like this. <laughs> So as an actor, you got to be careful because you've just lost your ability to make money that afternoon because your morning session just blew you out. So I, so I always with the actors will say, if you want to save any of the stuff at the end of the session, or if you got a second session, you know, let's go that on Friday night so that you have the weekend to recover. So, yeah, yeah. Would you ever like to direct, or maybe like like any original like animation or stuff, or are you happy to be around? No, I'd love to direct original, and I've done a little bit of original. Um, original's fun. It's Again, it kind of has this sort of a freer aspect to it that um, that games does, but you don't have to worry so much about picture, which is always nice not to have to put an awkward pause where you don't want to put one because so because the lips stop flapping. Um, and I and it is good. I, you know, the the cool thing about Yu-Gi-Oh to go back to it was that sometimes when you're doing original animation, you don't really know exactly. You don't have all the artwork. You just have some sort of rough bits of it that you think is actually going to be with the story, but you don't know for sure. And, and with anime, you know exactly what's going on in the scene. You know exactly how heightened the character needs to be. So with Yu-Gi-Oh, I knew exactly where I wanted the character to be and how big or small I wanted them to be. And then I could make the line however long I wanted. So it was kind of the hybrid. It was kind of the perfect version of both worlds. So that was, that was a cool thing about doing that. Yeah? Has anyone ever confused you with um, Alan DeGeneres? Because <laughs> when I walked in, I actually thought you were her. <laughs> a couple of times it's happened. Yeah. <laughs> you? Uh, do you have any tips on art design for cartoons? Um, you mean just to make them more interesting or to make them, like, you know, more popular? Oh, uh, like, yeah, to make it interesting. You know, I would say do something that, ha you know, obviously may sound obvious, but uh, do something that hasn't been done before. I think that a lot of times one of the things that shows don't necessarily pick up is because it looks like something else. And so the more that you can make somebody go, wow, I've never seen that, the more you're going to be able to, to have something that's, that's going to be unique and, and have its own you know, following. So I would just, and take, I think that people need to take more from, from illustration and stuff than, than from existing cartoons. You know, look outside of just what your your current medium is and draw from as many as possible. That that'll really help open up your artwork. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what character appearance like say you got to they look very similar? Yeah. You sometimes have to play around with the voices a little bit to yeah. make all this easier. Yeah. So um yeah you, sometimes you'll get characters that look very similar and so so you have to give as much distinction with them whatsoever. So in Persona 4, if anybody knows anything about the show, so yeah, we've got a couple fans here. So the game started out, so Johnny Bosch plays this, this antagonist in the show. So when he went to do the video game, the video game was done first, the animation came later. The people, at, and I didn't do the video game. People at the, at the studio that did the video game said, okay, we're gonna have you do this, this antagonist character and and he, you know, they kind of said, okay, well, it's kind of my natural voice. And Johnny, Johnny kind of did his natural voice for it. And then at the end of the session, he said, oh, and we're also going to have you do the protagonist, but don't worry, he's just grunts and groans. So, you know, the same voice is probably okay. Okay, so that works out fine until they do an animation series where those exact same two characters are now in scene after scene after scene with each other. So now I've got two characters with the same voice, and the, the game company's like, well, not my problem. So, so Johnny and I really had to work on coming up with two distinct voices for him. You never want to have the same actor in the same scene acting off himself. That doesn't really work. You try to avoid that as much as possible. And so, so when you guys get to season two of Persona 4, there's a lot of Johnny on Johnny action going on. <laughs> so, yeah, it's back. Um, so, for Persona 4, you have the That's okay. Yeah, 
I can tell you exactly what happened. <laughs> this is another one of those awesome fun <laughs> So, So what happened is that the company in Texas is a company called Sentai, and they're the ones who were releasing any of the distributors here in the States. So they had contacted, and we had done a lot of work with them in the past, Bang Zoom, that company that I do a lot of work with. Um, so they contacted Bang Zoom, and, and I had done another game with them, another series with them, and so I was gonna direct it. And, and they said, you know, we really wanna do this in Los Angeles, but only if we can get the same actors from the game. If not, then we'll just do it in Texas. And Bang Zoom was like, you know what, yeah, we can do all this. There's a couple of guys you're not gonna get, but 80% of the cast you're gonna get, and I think all the mains you're gonna get. Um, he goes, but you know, let me just go out and talk to them first before we say anything, and, and then that will, before it happens. So, so somebody from Sentai talked to somebody from Crunchyroll and just kind of let it slip that this conversation had happened, and then Crunchyroll goes, hey, guess what? And so all these actors who had yet to be contacted were at, I think, a Boston convention, and all the fans were going, you, I hear you're gonna do Persona for the animation. And the fans were like, okay, sure. But they hadn't actually been contacted, and so then it became this sort of like, I don't know. So it was about two months of their being, you know, smoothing out after just one loose comment really put the snowball into effect. Yeah. But in the end, it all worked out. And I think it came out pretty good. So has anybody seen the first season yet of Persona the Animation? Yeah? Okay, good. So it is released here. Not yet, so you saw some pirated copy of it somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so the, the English version is, is done, and then um, I will be giving out uh, a that signed DVD this afternoon. So of all the cast, yeah. Is, uh, for that panel, just so you guys know, there's a signed DVD and a signed T-shirt from Persona 4 signed by the whole cast. So, a reason to show up and wow me with a question that will make me want to give you that. Uh, what else? Any other questions? Anything else about the anime voice acting? Yeah? Who was your favorite character in Blaze Blue? Who was my favorite character in Blaze Blue? Well, it's the chick who calls everybody booby lady, of course. <laughs> she was awesome. Yeah, she was my favorite. In fact, I was at, I grew up in a really teeny small town and I was gone home for Christmas and they happened to be having an anime convention and I saw someone cosplay as that as I was like driving down the road. I'm like, oh my God, it's following me. <laughs> how, how, how is this even possible? But yeah, yeah, this was a great show. I mean, it was a great, great game to work on. It's funny. Um, anything else that we have here at all? All right, I'm gonna wrap it up then. Um, thank you guys for, for coming to the panel. So we've got the outtakes this afternoon, which would be fun. It's got do raw raw outtakes as well as do raw 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 outtakes as well as persona. They're all very funny and completely rude. So <laughs> I would show up for that. But then anybody who's at all interested in about voice acting or being a voice actor, tomorrow I've got two panels. One, you get to actually step up to the mic and um, try to act in the scene for either Do Ra Ra or Vampire Night. And then the second one, um, it just talks all about voice acting and I'll be handing out both of those a bunch of freebies. So, see you then. Okay, thanks guys. Woo!